there's a lot of things. I could talk about somebody's advanced human design chart for weeks and weeks and weeks and not unpack everything, you know, in conversation. So what I want to do with you today is give you a really broad, big picture overview of how we can turn our monkey mind into a money mind. That is the name of this uh, inspired presentation after all. It's an encore, basically, a continuation of that link. Yeah, leveraging your monkey mind. First, you have to understand what is a monkey mind? What is it? Well, it's that mind inside of your head about yourself that makes you think that you have to do something different than what you already are. Okay, so the challenge, the upset of believing your mind's story. It's one of the things all of us have. We all have a monkey mind. And the moment that you can let go of identifying with that mind inside of your head about yourself, the thought you think that makes you shrink, what can happen is if you are allowing things to move through you without overly identifying, now it can become wisdom. It becomes wisdom when you are operating in alignment. So that's the most important thing, kind of like a review. Okay, operating from alignment is what is going to make this much easier for you. So as an example, if you look down at your body graph, you know the open centers. Now everybody has everything in the body graph. You have a gate 63, even if you don't have a little colored black or red imprinting there from a planet. Okay, if it's open in your design, that means then that you are receptive here. This image makes me think of Ra, he said, you know, people often ask me if I could have any design, what would it be? And he said, complete openness, just like this, just a vast expanse of receptivity to everything. That was his ideal. Of course, it's not something that's possible, but you know, ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. Now, in the openness of the design, this is where you are receptive to learning about life. We do not want to get rid of the openness. The openness is precious and valuable. It's just that what happens is your mind gets obsessed out here and it takes for granted everything in your design that is defined. Okay, so it does not, the mind is an it, it does not place any value on what your life force is, particularly when it's unconscious, when it's undefined as far as your design natal imprint having an open or undefined center, an undefined function. What happens is these are places of mm, soreness, wounding, challenge, upset, when we try to make the inconsistent consistent. This is inconsistency. Okay, so you look down at your body graph. It's a good idea to have your body graph in front of you when you take classes of, with me. Look down at your body graph. Those open or undefined functions are where you have potential money receptors, okay? So the money receptors are in the undefined functions. So whatever gate activations you happen to have there, that's a planet standing in a doorway, outstretched hand, wanting to sell other people something. Okay, so that's where you can sell any activation in an undefined function. So what do we learn when you feel not good enough? and you attempt to overcompensate, and you're desperate to prove your worth and have more and more achievements, more and more accolades, and have external validation, what do you learn? Oh, maybe you learn, I really am not good enough, I can't compete. You know, I'm trying to compete with all those people out there that are super competitive and I just can't pe compete. I don't have the consistent willpower. That's wisdom, because guess what? This life is not about you having to prove anything to anyone when you're undefined here. So the wisdom potential, potential is letting go of trying to prove. Now, in order to understand how the not self works and how making money works, how we make money is reinforcing other people's not self. Now, at this point, you're like, Lavina, what are you talking about? I came into human design to help awaken and enlighten. I came here to help other people. I don't want to reinforce their not self. Let's say everybody has a not self. You can't get rid of it. Everybody has that little voice inside of your head about yourself. Example, if you have an open, undefined heart center and you've got a gate activation here, that is about 
learning about what it takes to be the best. If it's undefined, that is something that you are learning about in this life from a past experience of life, potentially, where you, Ra would say, fucked up, where you messed up, and you've got to do this over again this life. So what are you learning about? What does it take to be the best? More specifically, in the line value, let's say it's a 26 line four, it's about censorship. We don't say everything when it comes to supporting others, you know, with what we say we're good at or the best at. We might not say, we might, um, you know, omit this particular concept or that particular fact or figure, what have you, in order to learn about proving and being the best. So everybody with an undefined heart center, 65% of the population running around with undefined heart centers. I'm one with an undefined heart center, but a 44 pointed at the other side. My mind thinks that I must be the best in order to prove worth and worthiness. And when you let go of that thought pattern of thinking that you have to be the best in order to be loved, in order to be valuable, in order to make enough money, stream of capitalism, when you can let go of that thought process, controlling and homogenizing you to constantly go after more and more and more, it's never enough for the not self. It's never satisfied. Nothing is good enough. When you can let go of that and trust in your decision-making process, whatever that happens to be for you. For me as an emotional, wide split pro definition projector, waiting for mutual recognition and invitation, emotional clarity, instead of knee-jerk reaction to trying to say something in order to prove that I'm the best. Okay, so this is what we're learning in this life. Either we have an activation in an undefined function that is teaching us something very specific. Hi. I'm a 21. My 21 is in line three. 21 line threes must not have a boss. Cannot. It's an absolute rule. 21 line threes will break their hearts. This is the literal heart. Over here is the immune system. Over here is the gall. Over here is the stomach. You will break your heart if you try to take control of something, someone, some circumstance, event, thing, place, people, whatever the case may be. If you have not entered into it correctly, if you're a 21, three. So I've learned in my lifetime to value being in control of my own high stream of capitalism, making money, material resources. So that's one of the clear defining things that I can give to you because I value being my own boss. I value being an independent contractor. I teach people how to make money. Now, I can't promise you anything, no promises here, but that's my conscious values and relating, my standards for relationship with others, making money, the wisdom potential. You come to me when you want to learn how to leverage your human design chart in order to make money. So what I did just then was I educated you, part of my definition, I'm a teacher, part of my incarnation cross, it says literally teacher. I gave you value as far as my mind and its process. I'm a contagion. I'm here to fulfill my life's work through my mind. And I explained something to you, how I'm here to fulfill my life's work in my fullest expression of purpose, cross of explanation. I explained something to you of value that you're interested in. My videos on making money, way more interested by the general populace than my other enlightenment and awakening material. You wouldn't be here if I hadn't said, turn your monkey mind into a money mind, or if you hadn't been signed up for my LYD guide training. Okay, so that's my little spiel to help get you into the mood of seeing what it is that I'm doing here. Everybody with an undefined heart tries to identify with worth and worthiness as something external, gathering things, you know, tactile touch things, feeding more and more of the stomach, being the best, having more on the material plane in order to not be uh, extinguished or die out. You know, fear of the past is fear of our genetic lineage dying out because we didn't have enough material resources. And here's the money channel. Okay, so 
what I'm going to do is continue on in each of these and just give you a really brief overview. And then we're going to look at charts so that you can identify what's going on in your design and what you can potentially be wise about in order to make money. Now, the next biggest place that we have as far as conditioning factors in our designs, the heart is one of the top priorities as far as the not self purpose. Those of you who are doing living your design guide training, remember this order, not self purpose, feeling not good enough, overcompensating. Next is avoiding confrontation and truth, feeling touchy, nervous, and defensive. That is the not self purpose. When you feel touchy, nervous, and defensive, and you immediately lie, that is the not self purpose. I can't tell them what I'm really feeling. I can't be honest. I need to not rock the boat. You know this. So when you stop making decisions because of avoiding confrontation and truth, on the flip side, you're operating from alignment. What you can do is sell people on confronting the truth when it's necessary. Okay. Confronting the truth when it's necessary, the absolute utter flip. Now the key here between these two undefined centers, wherever the case may be, but I'm talking about these two just right now is to let go of proving, let go of avoiding. And when you don't take what's coming through you personally, and you allow it to just simply be information that you're not making decisions about, and you're giving your wisdom potential to others without trying to manipulate, distort, lie, you know, shield, and you're embracing the truth because it's necessary, the pleasure of confronting the truth, the release of the suffering on the material plane because you know that you're good enough inherently because there are no flawed humans. There's only distorted minds. Every single human has a path and a purpose, a valuable path and purpose in this life. So when you let go of the mind's distortion and you give your wisdom potential to others, this is the key word others. Okay. The moment you let go, of the distortion of thinking about this stuff inside of you about yourself as something that you have to avoid confrontation or prove you're good enough, whatever the case may be. When you're operating in alignment, when you enter into things correctly, the gifts that you have in your open functions are for others. Hi, this is my undefined, totally open Ashna. How does Lavina make money? Lavina sells education. Open Ajnas are suckers for knowledge, for education. Even if you're a defined Ajna, let's, let's say you're unconsciously defined, partially red and black, maybe a total open or undefined red channel, wherever it happens to be. So you don't have a conscious channel there. Your mind is still going to be really interested, curious, engaged, wanting to learn more and more and more. Some of us are really about learning at the deeper levels. That's me. So let go is the key operative term. Let go of taking the undefined areas personally, like the role confusion, trying to be someone you're not modeling your business after somebody else's. This is something I was really guilty of back in the day, looking at what other people were doing. They're selling that they're charging that I'll try that too. Okay. Instead of entering into things correctly, I'm unconsciously defined here. So I have a consistent role. It's not one of my profit potentials, but when it's open or undefined in you, my friend, you have the wisdom to help be available to respond, to initiate, to guide, to be aware of a barometer of other people's identity, other people's direction, other people's secrets, self-expression, leadership, what have you. Okay. So any activation there, a profit potential for you that is in an undefined center. Again, we're only talking about the open functions, the undefined functions. They're not colored in your body graph, no matter what planet it is, no matter what line value, any gate activation in an undefined function is 
your profit potential. I have a ton of these over here in the Splenic Center. Unable to let go of, sorry about that, of fear. Rigid and inflexible. Scared. Really, really, really um, afraid. Dying before you've achieved your life's work or knowing what the value is in life, a life of purpose, a life of passion. Failing, extinguishing one's <laughs> genetic lineage, past, catching up with you, with you, the tomorrow, being afraid of that, whatever the case may be, these activations that are there, okay, dormant potentials, meaning there's a planet hanging out there, that is a teacher. Planets are teachers. Whatever gate activation you have there, it's a teacher, okay? It's teaching you about that function, and it's teaching others when you give your wisdom, your beautiful, gracious awareness of whatever the case may be that is important for you to give to others as a gift of your awareness, your truth, without lying, manipulating, distorting, without an agenda. This is non-agendized. This is not trying to get something from someone, particularly if you are an advisor, a projector like me. We have to let go of trying to secure our own survival, accolades, identity role, what have you. Just let go. Enter into things cleanly, okay? Letting go, trusting, allowing. When you are pretending that you are certain, now this is the key, pretending out of mental anxiety. When you get defensive, when you start to argue, to prove your point, to prove you're smart, to prove you're right, this is where you get lost. It's an undefined Ajna person, conceptualization function. What can you do when you let go, whoops, let go of trying to appear to be smart? You can ask questions. You can learn things. You can discover new curiosities, you know, opinions, answers, insights, ideas, whatever the case may be. All these wonderful things moving through you that you do not have to identify with something that you do have, you have to make a decision about. That's the key. Let go of trying to identify with what's moving through you. Quote from Ra. It is the unattached observation of the openness that leads to wisdom. Not overly identifying, oh, this is my idea. Let's say you do not have a plan planet in 11. My idea, my answer, my insight, my opinion, my realization, my rationalization, mine, mine, mine. That's what the mind does inside of your head about yourself. Okay? So when you think with that thought inside of your head about yourself and you're trying to prove or disprove, whatever the case may be, and you feel uncomfortable in your own skin, you're running a not self program. What happens when you let go? When you surrender to the form, the body, the body is the life. What happens? Wisdom, my friend. Instead of making a decision because of the pain and suffering, the repeated programs, the uh, undefragmented mental hard drive, okay? When you let go of those negative and false belief systems, something new breaks through. It's you you can let go. Let go of not knowing when enough is enough, being overzealous, letting go of trying to do everything all by yourself, letting go of having to work and super slave and get it all done all by yourself, not being able to ask for help. Help. Undefined sacrals are not here to work, not in the traditional sense of super slave away, not even you generators with a defined sacral. You're not here to super slave away. You're here to be who you are for yourself if you're defined. When you're undefined here, hi, non-sacral beings, manifester, generator, or sorry, projector, reflector. We are here to guide the other's energy. This is the energy resource. This is power. Every single gate in this function is powerful. You have planets there. Those are power traits that are learning wisdom in this life that you're here to give your gifts to others in right timing. Every single one of us has wisdom. Operating in alignment, it's precious and valuable. It's 
individuation. It's the unique differentiated expression of your perspective in this life. That's what the mind is for. The mind is there to allow one to commune with others. And the moment you get the agenda, the manipulation, the distortion out of the way, the moment you come from a clean place, maybe it's your higher self, maybe it's your willpower, maybe it's your emotional spirit that rises from within. Whatever it is that you are consisting of in, of in this life, you, who you are for yourself if you're generative, who you are for others if you're projected, who you are with your impact if you're manifested, who you are as a wisdom potential for the cosmos, from of the cosmos and for the world. Now, thinking about things that don't matter, this is the top 70% of the population are undefined here. This is the top when it comes to the um, number of people you could persuade or engage with about what is interesting, what is inspiring. Because what happens here is the not self thinks about things that doesn't matter to it. Tries to answer everybody else's questions, asking questions that maybe don't matter, getting lost and confused. Okay, confusion, doubt, that's what we're under right now with this current transit. When you let go of the confusion and doubt, what happens? What happens? It's inspiring. Inspiration is an intellectual field of awareness that is, you know, comes and goes. The pressure is there. It's not. It's undefined here. It's inconsistent. At the heart of inner truth is silence. Look at the Ray V. Ching, the hexagram 61. The middle is an empty space. Silence. Silence can bring profound potentials. Is it really a worthy logical process to pass on? Is it really something that's worthy of making sense of and sharing with others? Is it really worthy of pondering and coming to insights and explaining and knowing, putting it out into the world? That's what the mind is for. This is your mental construct, okay? Pressure of questions, and then being able to process your conceptualization function. That's your mind. Now your mind has a little voice that relates to every other undefined function, undefined gate, undefined channel, undefined trait, undefined strength. All of those voices go up into the Ajna. This is why you cannot trust the mind inside of your head about yourself, because the openness has a voice there. So you cannot trust the mind's process to make a choice, to make a decision. Choices are not trustworthy when they're mental. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. Think back to the most horrible, damaging, let's say relationship mistake you made. I can remember mine. Lying to somebody I cared about. Do you remember that? making a, a mistake and then you feel it for the rest of your life, don't you? Feel things, emotional processing of what happened. Painful memories get stuck. They get, the trauma gets lodged in the cellular structure. It's hard to let go of those things. They linger. When we think of things as our fault, human design is a no fault system. It's not about choice. It's all about awareness. It's about surrendering from the conscious thinking mind into the form, the embodiment of the form. Now, where does this all begin? It begins with the root, at the root of everything. Don't overlook the root. The root is about pressure, physical pressure and stress. The head is about mental pressure and stress. So what happens when you are overwhelmed with too much pressure and stress? You try to hurry to get everything done fast, in too much of a hurry. The wisdom potential is recognizing how to manage stress and pressure, what to do with the pressure, how to leverage it, how to manage it, how to take advantage of it. When the burning, burning building is on fire, leave quickly. You're trying to eat or drive 
Maybe not so fast, you know? Let things take the time that it takes, like talking, like communicating. To speak of talking, let's look at the throat. Talking too much, trying to be the center of attention, trying to gain other people's hmm, eyeballs, visuals, hearing, you know? to get other people to look at me, look at me, look at me. I think of that little Finding Nemo. Pick me, pick me, pick me. Like the mm, projector that's never being seen. Talking too much, trying to be the center of attention. That's what happens when you get overwhelmed by too much energy running up to the throat. Now, even me, I'm an undefined throat center. If, not, if I am not operating undefined, unconsciously defined, there we go. I can still operate like an undefined throat center because I don't have motors connected up to that throat center. Defined throats, not operating in alignment, talk too much, do too much, give energy away to every impulse rather than aligning, being just what life is asking of you. No more, no less. Only what life is bringing to you to digest if you're emotional, to process. Okay, so what have you learned in this life? I can't tell you that. I can describe different elements of what's in the chart, but I can't tell you exactly. I can analyze charts, it's so much fun. But that's what we're gonna be doing soon here, okay? So completely open centers, that's a question that came in. Completely open center without any gate, gate activation, absolute and utterly. Your greatest area of conditioning, hi, that's me, greatest area of potential wisdom. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret key. You could go spend tens of thousands of dollars to learn this through the official coursework, or you could just listen to me. The key to making money is in your third line activations. Now, I told you just now that all of those gate activations in an undefined function, any one of them can be a profit potential. And no matter what line activation you have, you can go look at the third line and see if it resonates with you. Now, remember I said, everybody wants to make money. Everybody thinks that they got to have more, 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 especially if we're in, you know, scarcity mindset, not knowing when enough is enough and fearful about the future of whatever may or may not happen. All kinds of crazy stuff going on. Yeah. The bigger your bank balance, the more you worry that it's going to go away because it's never enough. The mind says millionaire eh, feels like 500,000. No big deal. I can tell you from experience, the mind gets lost looking for more. Now, the third lines may or may not be something that resonates with you that you identify with. All of you third line profiles. Let me pull something up, okay? Because I'm really good with visuals and it's really hard to keep track of what I'm saying if I don't have visuals. Resources, rave statistics, Jovian archive profiles, okay. One threes, three fives, three six, six threes. Congratulations, you've hit the jackpot. Third lines are here to be masters of the material plane. Why? Because every gate of all 64, you resonate to either unconsciously or consciously, unconsciously or consciously. So back to your question, what about the totally open functions? Totally open functions. Remember I said everyone has everything? Everyone has everything. You are receptive there. What you're going to resonate to if you're a conscious three, three, five, three, six, are all the third line activations in an undefined function. All of them. My profit potential is enormous because I'm a three, five. My mind is all about making money. My mind loves the game of making money. I have lots of third lines in undefined functions, specific gate activations as well. So I'm lucky. Got the jackpot this time. Able to generate lots of wealth. Keep it? Not so much. But generate lots of wealth? Yeah. 
by leveraging my wisdom potential and building teams. Teams. Projectors are not here to do things alone. They need support. Now, I'm going to go through this just as a little quick reminder. What is the not self purpose? I need to earn more money. So what are you selling when you've got an undefined heart? Worth, worthiness, how to earn more money. I need you to survive. I need health, safety, security, well-being. I need others to survive. I need more security, you know, whatever the case may be. So what do you sell? How to survive health, safety, security, wisdom of that. Okay. You're not giving it to people because it's defined here. You're receptive to taking them in and course correcting or helping them let go of something that's holding them back from being able to survive. That's holding them back from being able to make more money. I want to be rich. Oh, okay. That song ah, doesn't a heart center want to be rich. You know, everybody right now is also going through this, um, current transit moving towards the sleeping Phoenix. And we're all going towards finding the spirit through materialism. So it's not just a not self thing. It's the background frequency. You see it everywhere. Finding the spirit through materialism. That's just the name of the game we're moving into. There's lots of people who want more on the physical material plane. And some of them actually don't really care about making more money. They just want to do it on their own terms. Hi, I'm your person being in control. 21 line three, be your own boss. Okay. What's my role here? Who am I? Where am I going? How do I find love? How do I find the higher love of all that is or my self love or the love of humanity or the love of my body, the love of the form? How do I know which direction to go? This thing, that thing, what choice the mind says, what do you sell? Helping them find themselves. Everyone has access to their own personal integrity, their sovereignty, their authority, their authoritative process. If they don't have an inner authority, mental projector, you have an authoritative process that involves others in the environment. If you don't have an inner authority reflector, you have your process of authoritative process through the lunar cycle. So everyone has their own personal process of integrity and authority. What I'm telling you is not to sell them on the not self and not give them anything. You as living your design guides, I want you to give them the true self. Ra did this to us. He said, seven years and you'll emerge a new person. Well, yes, that's true. But guess what? After seven years, it starts again at a deeper level. So you don't have to worry about trying to get somewhere with this. There's nowhere to get. There's nothing to prove. It is about the never ending process of attunement to this moment and this moment and this moment and this moment. Why do I lie? Why do I hide? Why do I have shame and guilt and regret and fault? When you can help someone, those of you with the undefined solar plexus, embrace the truth, help them the pleasure of what really is needed here, what they're really passionate about, what they really desire, because you can feel it in your body when you're in tune and in touch with that right other person at the right time, in the right place, under the right role under the right circumstances, wisdom you give to others. And that is precious and valuable because no one else on this planet has lived your life. There is no comparison between you or anyone else, not one. They're going to come to you when you're ready to give to them your fruits of your labors or your learnings or your awareness or whatever the case may be. Teacher ready, student appears, student ready, teacher appears. It's that simple operating in alignment. It's the only most important thing. None of this, the things that I'm telling you, yeah, they're true, but the only thing that really matters to you is your authority. And that's why to take this course, living your design or becoming a guide. 
Just prove yourself, says the not self. Fake it till you'll make it, says the G. Avoid the plain, the pain. Hide, lie. So, you might sell them with the sweet, but give them the salt too. They've got to put in the work. If you're taking people into your practice as a living or design guide to bring it back to what you're all here for if you're in this class moving forward with me, if you're taking them into your practice, you're going to face their not self. It is what it is. Their mind is going to ask you all kinds of questions that the answer doesn't really matter and you just bring them back home to their authority. That's all. That's all you have to do. So they don't think that they always have to prove that they're the best or model themselves after what everybody else, what worked for them, I'll do it too. Or just pretend that everything is okay or that they're okay. Instead of negating and shaming and faulting and blaming, coming back home to your own authority, each of them, uniquely, individually, one person at a time. This is an individual process. Now I'm a group person. I love me some groups. I love them. They're so much fun. I can show up for a group better than I can usually individually. Now what happens when you're in a group? If you are a non-sacral person, what happens is you become conditioned by the generative auric frequency because 69, 70% of the population are defined in the sacral. So what happens to you in a group? How can I work harder? How can I do more? How can I be more? How can I have more? How can I make more? How can I build more? If only I had enough energy to do more, says the mind. So what do you do? Leverage. You find tools. You find automation. You find people. You find support. That's what builds a big business. You find empowerment of the right direction. The thing that you're passionate about. If you are not passionate about human design and being yourself, this ain't going to work for you. It's not. Both of those, hand in hand. You must be yourself in order for this to work for you. Be yourself. And it's not about trying to make anything happen out in the openness except for the things that naturally, organically occur. And what you'll find, my friends, is if you decide to dive into this through studying your own third lines, through the materials on Jovian Archive, that's what I did way long ago, one of the first programs I put together and bought and implemented. 21s are implementers. I've been doing this for a really long time and I can tell you, please don't follow what your mind thinks. No matter what I say, don't try to take advantage of this or leverage this from your mind. What you can find is when I describe things to you, you may now or later over time recognize what's happening and identify that it's already there. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to fix anything. You don't have to solve anything. All you have to do is be yourself. Instead of trying to find your value, your value is innate. Instead of trying to figure out who you are, you already are that when you're operating in alignment. Instead of, what the hell do I say right now? Oh, quietude is a natural state of being. Not having to say anything to be effective, to be efficient. Good listeners, do they talk a lot? No, they listen. Some of us are not designed to be talk, talk, talk all the time. Some of us have quietude as a natural state of being. And we transmit energy, frequency, through other methods. We don't always have to make sound. Instead of your mind trying to validate the openness and the design, the existence of all of these things, instead of the mind thinking it's unworthy because they don't know, here, let me read it carefully. We're unworthy, they're singing in a chorus, because we don't know who we are and why are we so sensitive, we have to pretend everything's fine and that we know what's going on. Too much pressure, too much stress, let go of it. At this point, you might be going, okay, Lavina, get to the point. Where's my money maker? Show me the money. Okay, no problem. But really, the thing I want you to remember is that mind, even though it's 
screaming loud in your mind, in your head, about yourself. Take a deep breath. Instead of saying I, my biggest solution to you, my friends, the mind thinks. It thinks. My mind thinks. Not I, because it's not you. If you take nothing else away from this webinar, especially if you're new, that will serve you so much in the deconditioning process. Don't worry. I won't abandon you if you're afraid of being abandoned. Help's on the way. We're going to do this. We got this, okay? So now we're going to work with charts. And you're welcome to ask questions about the concepts as we go through. I'm not doing um, open mic just yet. I'll go through everybody's charts quickly, and then we can go into open mic. Okay, one person at a time. So the point being, each of you has wisdom. Unattached observation of the openness leads to wisdom. The moment that you stop making decisions because of what your mind is saying, that you have to, must, should do, and you allow it to move through you without identifying or overly identifying, without trying to do something because it says you must and you have to and you should. When you operate it in alignment, the openness becomes something beautiful and precious you can give to others as a unique, different perspective that no one else has because no one has your design. Not one person has your design and your experience. None. Each of us has someone to offer something to, and that's how you make money, your offers. So what are you offering? Are you selling worth and worthiness? I do that through being your own boss. Are you selling concepts that you can really be sure of? I do that. It's all raw, not me. My own way though. Are you selling inspiration of inner truth? Heck yeah. That's my driving focus. I love that stuff. Okay. Pondering the wise, the great mysteries. That's what I do. That's how I make money. Are you selling committing to yourself on this journey and this time? Committing to the personal perseverance of being embodied in this life. Committed to a journey of discovery. Hi, that's me. Part of my incarnation cross. What grounds and balances me is to be there in service to others in support of others when they want to know how my wacky weird mind thinks and what comes out of me when I'm inspired and I'm emotionally clear. Okay. So are you selling communication, communion, a well-placed question perhaps in right timing that unlocks the floodgates of somebody else, perhaps the motions of being seen, witnessed, pleasure, you're selling pleasure, avoidance of pain, let go of the pain, sell the pleasure in instead, being in passionate abundance of romance of finding your own spirit. Are you selling direction and transcendent love, proper role in right timing with the right others? This role with this person, this role with that person, this role with that person. Who am I for myself? Were you selling enough is enough? Enough, just quit doing things for the money. Hi, that's me. Okay, be in service to your passion. Okay, quit doing things for the money. Money isn't everything. Gate 14, line one. The 14 in line three is either going to be obsessed with having more or just stop doing things for the money and go in alignment with your higher self your higher calling, your higher purpose, your higher passion, whatever the case may be. So some of these, when you go and read the third lines, and I do want you to do that, if you are a three, profile one, three, three, five, six, three, three, six, go read all the third lines. That's your way. That's your material way. I know you're asking, if I don't have any threes, what then? We do have a couple in class. I will do my best to explain. Are you selling safety and security? Are you selling well-being? Feel better by letting go of these things that you're afraid of that may or may not happen in the future. They're just illusions. The future is a falsity. It's an illusion. It's not here yet. Can you let go of that fear of tomorrow, what tomorrow may bring? Ooh, if you've got one of those, you're giving that to others. 
as a wisdom potential, okay? Are you selling freedom? Freedom from stress and pressure? All you have to do to unlock your wisdom is be yourself. Every single gate activation you have, profit potential in an undefined center, 